Well, n n let's move on to something else, um, um, and that is defense now. Uh, some of the you know big stories that we read this morning. One of them that of course has been you know, spoken about across the whole country is the kidnap of you know seventy three. Some people say up to a hundred students in the Zamfara State once again. Um, now, well, just to also quickly mention, the Minister of Defense is Bashar Magashi. I was right. Uh, I just didn't mention Magashi. But um, let's talk about Zamfara State. One time too many. Um, it feels like clockwork. It feels like it happens every two weeks. Once they release a set, they take a new set. Um, what would you say is going on with regards kidnapping in Nigeria? Um, I think it's a very simple answer. And I think it's the collapse of internal security in our country. Um, internal policing has failed. Um, and it's been on a downward spiral in the last 30 years. Um, we haven't built a competent police force. Um, we haven't built a security, or an internal security architecture um, that gathers enough local intelligence. Um, we haven't strengthened local governance across our country. Um, and these are the consequences that we're now experiencing today, such that you can move hundreds of children across 100 kilometers um, distance, and there is not going to be a red flag from any agency to stop or apprehend them. That's a complete failure of internal security architecture. And that is the real problem that we're experiencing in this country. These criminals um, have now seen that we're extremely vulnerable, especially at the hinterlands, um, in areas that are close to the forest and in villages you know, across the fringes between Zamfara, Katina, uh, 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 Kaduna, um, and many of these communities that bother uh, um, forests and, and, and other countries, you know. So it, it's a complete failure of internal security. We have not patrolled our borders effectively. Mm. Um, we have not trained and retrained our servicemen um, um, effectively. And fundamentally, local governance has broken down completely. Um, so you have local government chairmen who have no, um, um, uh, who have no grip you know, of their local governments because they are appointed as cronies by governors and have not been elected by, 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 that, by people within that communities. And so they do not have legitimacy um, to govern. Of course, many of their resources are also uh, uh, used by the governor uh, and very few um, is left for them to actually administer. And so that, that breakdown of governance um, has led, um, you know, to a lot of I mean, you go to many of these villages in Zamfara, there's, there's little or no police presence in many of those places. The access roads are completely broken down. Um, no hospitals, uh, no, no schools. Um, it, it's, it's, they are left, I refer to them as abandoned communities that are completely left behind. You will think you're not in Nigeria when you go to many of these places, right? And, and so, you know, uh, crime has continued to soar. And, and the fundamental thing that has happened to kidnapping in our country, however sad it is, is that for every time we flash on our TV screens that 20 children have been kidnapped and ransom of millions of naira have been paid, what we are doing without knowing is that we are advertising the lucrativeness of the trade of kidnapping. Because one thing that never happens is that these criminals are hardly apprehended, they are hardly prosecuted, they are hardly jailed. So a young, broke, abandoned person in the forest in Zamfara, in Katina, in Sokoto, in Kebi, says to himself that there might be an opportunity for me to make millions of naira if I can kidnap because nobody's going to arrest me and nobody's going to prosecute me. Indeed, Mr. Adebayo. Yes, let's, um, let's you know, bring in Mr. Adebayo now. Mr. Adebayo, can you hear us? Okay, um, we'll try to uh, reconnect with Mr. Adebayo. But Mr. Adio, another you know dimension to this security um, threats that we've seen is the government and, and specifically the governor of Zamfara State, Bela Metawale, urging people to take up arms. So he's saying that um, the people of the state should come out en masse. They should face the bandits if they come to their village. He says they should not sleep in the night. They should set ambush for um, these terrorists and um, bandits. And um, they should you know, get, just get weapons or any weapon they can find and attack these terrorists who come to invade their villages. First of all, is this a realistic call? Because I wonder where, you know, farmers and you know mothers and fathers would get arms from 
you know, to go ahead and attack bandits. So first of all, is that realistic? And in a functional democracy, should a protest not be the resort and the government taking action? Uh, sorry, I think Mr. Adebayo is back. If you could, Mr. Adebayo, uh, can you hear us? <laughs> Mr. Adebayo? Oh, Mr. Adebayo, you can go on, please. Okay. Um, I think it's an unrealistic thing. Listen, the fundamental constitutional provision and the reason that there exists a government is for the protection of life um, and properties. The security and welfare of the Nigerian people shall be the fundamental objective of the Nigerian government, without which there actually is no need for government. Because the reason that you need a government in place is for the welfare and security of the Nigerian people. Now, if any government abdicates that responsibility or shies away from that responsibility, it has completely failed and has completely lost legitimacy and has no need and is not fit for purpose to govern. It's as simple as that. Because the alternative is a wild, wild west situation where people now have to arm themselves to defend themselves um, from criminal elements across the country. And you don't want to have a country where everybody wants to move around with a shotgun or a cutlass or an arm in himself, um, trying to protect him himself or his family. So I think, first of all, at the government level, um, uh, many of these governors who I feel are not even challenging the president enough is to admit that they have failed the Nigerian people. They have failed in the responsibility to protect weak and vulnerable vulnerable citizens, and they should take that responsibility very seriously. The Nigerian citizens do not have the capacity to protect themselves from criminals who are wielding AK-47s. So I think it's a pipe dream, and I think it's sad, if not embarrassing, um, that we'll be urging um, innocent farmers um, to defend themselves from criminals who are clearly armed um, with superior weaponry, um, who, are, who are taking over villages, who are killing people in their tens and in their hundreds to now defend themselves against those people. I think it's sad, um, uh, 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 and I choose my words carefully. Um, it's borderline irresponsible because you, you cannot expect, I mean, what are you going to do against an AK-47 building bandit or kidnapper or terrorist? There's absolutely nothing you can do about it. You're bringing a knife to a gunfight. And it makes no sense that a government that we pay taxes to, that we pledge allegiance to, will be throwing it back to us to say we should protect ourselves. When they move around in SUVs with security escorts everywhere, where their children are, are getting education outside this country, when their families are highly protected, when they live in high-gated estates, uh, 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 highly policed and protected, and we are faded uh, and banded to the Philistines, it's absolutely ludicrous. It's absolutely ludicrous, and we cannot accept this. It's their job, and it's their responsibility to protect the Nigerian people. And it's, it's ridiculous to even imagine that we should be having the conversation that the Nigerian people should protect themselves. It makes no sense and must not be accepted or tolerated well, um, uh, uh, in our democracy. No right, sense I, Adio, I, I'm guessing that you, you know, the failure that you have, you've mentioned now um, where you pointed out that, you know, a government that has failed uh, in, in, in that regard of that very, very fundamental uh, requirement of governance um, and, you know, and should be able to own up, you know, and agree that they have failed. And, you know, I'm guessing that that covers the state and federal and local level of governance. Okay. Yes, talk to bottom. Okay. Talk um, to bottom. Mark Adebayo, can you hear us? I've been hearing you all along. Well, for some reason, we couldn't hear you. I apologize for your power situation. It seems uh, the power is off again. Um, but I want to bring you back you know, with regards to the incident in uh, Zamfara, uh, the kidnap of 73 or 100 uh, students once again uh, that is uh, taking place. Um, and I, I will say, I'm going to ask you on a, you know, something that I had mentioned earlier, the um, seemingly you know, in, invisibility, or it doesn't seem like a lot of these security agencies exist in those locations, the DSS, the Nigerian police, you know, the uh, SWAT, you know, like they were mentioned, you remember at the end of the NSAS protest, there was something called SWAT, yeah. the, the NSCDC, every single level of security 
It doesn't seem to exist in Zamfara. And it, it, why does it look that way? That a hundred people can be taken a hundred kilometers away and there's no resistance anywhere. Uh, well, um, one of the things that uh, we have to... Can you hear me? Yes. yes. Loud and clear. Go ahead. Okay. Now, well, you know, there seems to be a collapse of government. There seems to be a total collapse of governance structures in this country. And it's quite unfortunate. We are tending towards, critically tending towards a state failure. Uh, because it is unheard of, it is unthinkable that we can be going through this circle again and again and again, again. kidnappings of, of school children every day, every time. Uh, you know, I, you know, these days, anytime I or any member of my family wants to travel and they have to, if we, where they are going, it cannot be done by air, it's going to be by road. I, my heart is always in my mouth until they get there and I know they have arrived safely, and until they receive me. Especially when my children are going back to school. You understand? So it's like that. That's why when I was mentioning minister that ought to go, I mentioned the first minister first. The health minister ought to go because of the mis mismanagement of the health situation. The deformation minister has to go because of this misinformation. The internal affairs minister has to go. For the police have all these people a whole gamut. Now let me tell you, we, we were discussing. I was hearing uh, uh, Mr. Adio discussing about the issue of the policy trust in the area of Arigosho. Now. There is no magic. I do not envy the current minister of, uh, of agriculture. I don't envy him. Because there is a policy clash. There is a policy crisis. There is a policy anarchy. Now, the policy of the presidency is, is directly conflict with the agricultural, whatever agricultural policy that you have. Once the president is saying that he's going to continue with the open grazing policy, there is, nothing, there is no miracle. There is no magic that anybody who is an agriculture minister will be able to perform because the food prices will still continue to, to, to rise because farmers will not be able to save their farms. These Ila others will still continue to go there and kill them because the president says he wants open grazing, which is antithetical to the agricultural development of this country. And you know that the oil will soon go. The oil will still go. I don't know whether we can see we can see half oil or oil will be marketable in the international market in the next uh, in the next uh, 20 years. So we have to fall back on agriculture. And for as long as you allow open grazing policy, uh, we will never get it right in the area of agriculture, no matter how good the Minister of Agriculture is. So that is one thing we have, we have to know. Uh, when the government is unable to protect its people, when the, the government has lost the uh, legitimate use of force to protect the people, we are turning towards state failure. If bandits or criminals can just walk into the Nigerian Defense Academy to kill people, if bandits can drive bomb into the police headquarters and bomb it, and who is going to protect us? If our security agencies have uh, the Casino State government came out to say defend yourself, it's telling the people to defend yourself. The Safara State government came out to say defend yourself. Now, but when the Bedouin State government, Samuel Autumn, said the same thing. About a year ago, the federal government came hard on him. Came hard on him. Now the government is saying that I can no longer protect you. Go and protect yourself. And that is going to lead to terrible. Because if you say I should protect myself, it's either I go and get a pop action or I go and get a AK-47 by myself. If bandits and criminals and kidnappers and terrorists can have access to weapons, then the free citizens also have, have to have weapons. If the government is telling me to go and protect myself, it takes a good guy with the gun, you know, to defend himself against the bad guy with the gun. And we should not allow that thing to spiral out of control. It's unfortunate that we have failure of governance. Now, the president can sack the ministers. Who is going to sack the president? Hmm. Who is going to sack the president? And, and what do you the think? The president himself needs to be sacked. Hmm. That's, it, that's, it, that's it, the bitter truth. And in a situation where these bandits are apprehended and then, you know, the military says, you know, they have surrendered, that they are now repentant and they hmm. reintegrate them into society, they forgive them, you know, where does that leave our anti-terrorism war? That, but the, uh, that is one of the things I wrote uh, in, my, in uh, my column last week. Nowhere in the world no, we are in the issue of terrorism as any terrorist ever repented. There is no repentant terrorist anywhere. What they do is that they deceive you that they have repented. Look, all those people they said they are repentant Boko Haram members who are now in the city. You can see the upsurge in Boko Haram attacks now. That is because those people they released to the society are gathering intelligence real time 
and sending back sail to their commanders in the bushes. That is why you are seeing the upsurge. You understand? That is why East Trap is, is gaining ground now. You are releasing, you are releasing terrorists who have killed people, who have maimed, who have raped, who have displayed millions of Nigerians, displaced many, many millions of Nigerians. You said you are repentant. You know, remember that general that came on here to say that the repentant Boko Haram stands a chance to become the president of Nigeria. How how ludicrous, how far, how how can, how, how, how ludicrous that statement can be. And those are the people who are managing our security. You are encouraging, you say a Boko Haram, a repentant Boko Haram can be. That's why they have one of them in, 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 in government now. You know, a confirmed, right. a confirmed sympathizer of terrorism. Bill is now the one managing my data and your data and everything about, about you and me, about this country today. So, I mean, we should not shy away from the, from the truth. It is quite unfortunate. And I, the other thing I need to tell Nigerians is that the regular Nigerians like us, we should, uh, we should know that we should never allow ourselves to, to, to be used against one another by this leader in the area of religion or ethnicity. Let me tell Nigerians should know that poverty does not have ethnicity, does not have religion. Insecurity does not have for, uh, uh, ethnicity or religion. We must never play the religious card. We must never play the ethnicity card. We must come together and make sure that we find peace. In fact, let's forget about even blaming anybody anymore. Let us find a way. Let that be a massive action in terms of finding peace, solution to our problems, to our common problems. All, All right. these people um, that are in the higher, higher places, the they are protecting themselves. Never allow anybody to use religion or ethnicity you know, to determine how, how you will respond to national issues. And I think Nigerians must know that. We must know that. We, we, are, we are divided enough. No more division. Let us come together and find common solution to our issues. That is, that is my All message directed to Nigerians this morning. Marco De Bayo, uh, thank you very much uh, for staying with us all through thank the you. discussion this morning. Once again, apologies for your uh, past situation, uh, but we thank you for uh, still you know, joining the conversation. Uh, Ayodele Adio, the um, Managing Director of the Avalon Daily, thank you also for your time and for you. uh, speaking with us on these uh, very important uh, issues. Thank you. Thank you so much for having me. All right. Thursday morning, uh, and this is where we will be wrapping up the discussions on the uh, breakfast this morning. Uh, if you missed out, remember where to catch up. It's simply at Plus TV Africa on Facebook and Instagram. Same with our YouTube channel, at Plus TV Africa, and we have a second YouTube uh, Yes, it's channel. at Plus TV Africa Lifestyle. I am Aneta Felix. And I am Osao Ogbon. Have a beautiful September. <laughs>